Hey guys, Tim Starnes from CineSamples. In the previous tutorial video, I talked about basic compression and limiting. Prior to that, I had a series of corrective EQ tutorial videos. I've been asked when I would use a multiband compressor instead of a static EQ or vice versa. So in this tutorial video, I'll try to answer that. As with the previous videos, I'm focusing on applying these concepts within one particular mixing situation, MIDI production using sample libraries in the orchestral and film score genre. I'm gonna start with a session that includes Tina Guo Acoustic Cello Legato. I've recorded a C major scale at 60 BPM going up and down the range. Here's the scale with no processing applied. I'm gonna play just part of the scale. Notice that some of her lower notes are louder and more resonant than others. This is the nature of her cello, every cello. Some notes resonate within the instrument more than others. You can even see the waveform expand on these particular notes. In order to prevent those notes from sticking out over the others, you could use either a static EQ or a multiband compressor. First, I'm gonna try a static EQ. So I'm gonna play again without any EQ. Notice her lowest note, which is C1 on the contact scale. Its first harmonic is loud, so I'm going to want to try to reduce that. That same note, the E overtone, also seems um, a little louder than normal, so I'm going to try to reduce that as well. The following notes, D1, E1, and F1, their first harmonics are also quite loud. So I'm going to attempt to expand the EQ band that covers the first harmonic of C1 to cover that of D1, E1, and F1 as well. But I want to make this band as thin as possible so I don't compromise neighboring notes that sound well balanced. Next, I want to try a multiband compressor. I'll focus on the same two frequency centers as I did with the static EQ. So with the multiband compression, notice the sound is warmer and it sounds less carved out in the lower frequencies than the static EQ. The multiband compressor only reacts to the higher energy notes and has less effect on those with less energy, thereby not compromising the fundamental or overtones of the well-balanced notes. So let's go back to the static EQ and play. Now back to the multiband compressor. The multiband compressor in this case sounds a little more natural than the static EQ, although the static EQ isn't bad. I believe the static EQ would work better if every note on her cello required the same reduction of these same frequencies, but that's rarely the case with a solo acoustic instrument. So let's return to the multiband compressor. Now I notice that D2, which is two Ds above her lowest note, still has a huge amount of energy. I don't want to ask the multiband compressor to reduce any more in this frequency range because I feel any more gain reduction would sound too affected. Since all the other problem notes have been solved, I'll simply add a static EQ on that note to help it. 
I recommend adding the static EQ before the multiband compressor, otherwise the multiband compressor might respond unnaturally to the extra energy from D2. A further option is to make the static EQ a dynamic EQ that only responds to the greatest increase of energy in that particular frequency. This seems to be the most natural sounding combination so far. Now let's move to a more practical application. This is the demo session from the previous compression tutorial number 5. I'm going to bypass the compressor I applied to Tina's stem and remove the limiter I applied to the master bus. And listen to the mix with no processing at all on Tina. Now here is Tina's stem only. There's that D2 note again. All right, let's add the multiband compressor and the dynamic EQ that I used in the scale session and keep Tina soloed. Now listening to it in the mix. And if you like, you can add the compressor that we used in the previous tutorial video. You may have trouble hearing Tina's cello when the mix gets thicker and busier. You could raise her volume, but there might be another solution. Listen for another element in the mix that might be competing with her. In this case, it's the high strings. I'm gonna start by soloing Tina and then gradually add every other stem until the high strings is the last stem added. I don't really want to make the solo a featured solo, and yet I also don't want to have the strings lose energy and presence in the mix. So the best way to do that is to make a little bit of room in the soloist's natural speaking range, which seems to be around 4K. So I want to use a sidechain input on a multiband compressor. When Tina plays, that triggers the multiband compressor to reduce the gain in a certain frequency range. So in this case, I'm sending Tina out bus 15, on the high strings track, I've added a multiband compressor whose key input is bus 15. I've added a band around 4K that responds to the input of the side chain. So the louder Tina plays, the more reduction happens on the high strings around this 4K band, which allows Tina to cut through the high strings a little bit more. <laughs> 